Hi, thank you for coming. I'm very grateful that you came. Uh, first, I'll tell you a little bit about my story, and then we'll talk about how we can reach your goals. Uh, we, today, we want to talk about how to double your business in 2016. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit about my story. I did attend uh, Princeton University. I grew up with uh, four brothers and no sisters, and uh, we were very crazy brothers, and we were always fighting. And because we are always fighting, I, I spend a lot of time at the school by accident because I, I don't want to come home. And uh, so four brothers are, are always struggling with each other, and I ended up staying in the school late, and then I was able to get a scholarship to Princeton University. And uh, the third year that I was in school in Princeton, uh, then I got a message that my mother got cancer, uh, breast cancer. And uh, then I almost went crazy. I was very sad. We were very, very close to each other. And then uh, she said, uh, I got some information that I was going to my class uh, one of my classes, and there was a young man from India in one of my classes, and uh, he was sitting under a tree at Princeton, and I was walking to class, and, and he looked at me and he went like this, you know, and uh, the Buddha used to do this to people, you know, come here, sit under the tree. So I said, no, no, I can't sit under the tree, I, I have to go to my class. I never was late to class. He said, no, no, just sit down, I have to tell you something, you know, and I said, okay. So I sat next to him and, and he said, you know, if you want to understand about life and death, if you want to understand the deeper meaning of life, then you should go to India, you know? You should really go to India. You cannot learn what you need to learn at Princeton University. You have to go to India and, and, and meet those great gurus and sages. So I don't know, I was so sad and crazy about my mother. I said, okay, I will go, you know? And I never went anywhere in my life. Then uh, I was very scared to go. Uh, I didn't know anybody in India. And he said, don't worry. I will be in the airport in Delhi when you land. And uh, don't worry about anything. I will take care of you when you get to India. So I, I just got a leave of absence from the school, from the university. And I took the plane to India. And, and I remember when I landed in New Delhi, and they opened the, the door, and I come down into the airport. Uh, two days ago, I came to the Mumbai airport. This was uh, 40 years ago in India. And the Delhi was crazy. The airport was completely crazy. Like pigs and chickens and cows and people screaming. And, and I came out of the, into the airport and I looked for my friend and I, I couldn't find him. And actually, he never came to India. <laughs> he stayed in America. <laughs> then I looked in the airport for two, three hours. I couldn't find him. Then I came out, I'm just like 20 years old, and, and you know, there are like 50 taxi drivers grab me. Do you need a taxi, sir? Yes. Okay, I, I'll take a taxi. Then I got in the taxi, you know, and, and uh, he said, where are you going? I said, I don't know. He said, difficult to take you, <laughs> you know, to where you don't know where to go, you know. So he said, do you need a place to sleep? Do you need a hotel? I said, yes, yes, I need a place to sleep. He said, you are so lucky, sir. My brother just is only owning a hotel, you know, which is just his house, right? <laughs> and uh, he took me to this uh, small house, and I stayed in a room for two days. I was so afraid I didn't come outside. And then uh, he knocked on the door. I think he was worried that I was sick or something. And he knocked on the door, and he said, are you OK? I said, no. He said, uh, are you hungry? I said, yes. He said, I'll bring you some food, but you have to open the door, okay? Then uh, he came and came inside, and he brought me a tali, very nice tali, and he explained to me every part of the tali and all of the doshas and all the Ayurvedic things. And, and then he said, why, why did you come to India? You know, I said, my friend told me if I come to India, I can learn the secrets of life and death, you know, from the gurus in India, you know, from the... He said, look for Buddhist people, you know. Then the guy, he looked at his watch. He said, you're a little bit late, you know. I said, why? He said, oh, the Buddhist people finished in India 1,000 years ago. <laughs> there are no Buddhist people here, you know. 
then I said, well, what can I do? And he said, well, you go to the mountains, to the Himalaya, like uh, Masuri, Dehradun, and uh, maybe you can find some of those refugees, Tibetan refugees. So I went to the mountains and I, I met some of the Tibetan refugees, some of those uh, lamas. And uh, slowly I started to study with them and I became a monk. And then I stayed for 25 years. Uh, in the monastery, and I studied uh, all of the pustakas and all of the subjects uh, for 25 years. And then uh, after 25 years, uh, you have a special examination. I don't know if you saw how they do examination in ancient India, but they ask question like this. Uh, they will ask you a question in Tibetan language. They will like karate. And then you have to answer very quickly. and. This takes three weeks, uh, day and night, you have to answer questions from about uh, 2,000 people uh, in their language. And uh, at the end, if you pass the examination, you get this yellow hat. Do you have a picture of that? Just a picture of the hat, I think. Uh, they don't have a degree, you don't get a paper. You just get this yellow hat and that's all. You are pundit, you know, uh, they call Geshe. And and then you're supposed to relax for the rest of your life and teach the young monks and just drink tea and uh, you can throw out all your books and you don't have to study anymore. And you become like one of the bosses in the monastery. So I was very happy. My mother came from, my stepmother came from America and she was there at the graduation and I was very happy and I start to relax in my room and then I got a telephone call. So in our monastery, we didn't have any telephones uh, at that time, not allowed. I'll show you, this is a telephone. Uh, we have the baby monks, and uh, you just give the message to one of the baby monks, and he will run to the other room, and he will leave the message. So I got a message from the abbot, from the boss of the monastery. He said, you have to come to my room. Then we don't like to go to the boss's room because usually he will punish you for something, you know. You have this mala, you know. Uh, they don't use it for praying. They use it to beat the young monks, you know. So they'll go whoosh, whoosh. Then you will get these red spots here. And uh, we don't like to go to the abbot's room, but he, they said, okay, just go and talk to him. So I, I went in, I said, I'm sorry if I did anything wrong. I'm very, he said, no, no, you didn't do anything wrong. You are the first Westerner in 600 years in our monastery to become a Geshe. Congratulations, you passed the examination. But because you are a foreigner, uh, we have second examination for you. Then I said, you didn't tell me about a second examination. He said, he waved his uh, mala. I said, okay, just tell me, I'll, I'll do it, you know. Then he said, uh, you have to go to New York. I said, why? He said, you have to start a business, you know, you have to help to start a business. Then I said, I don't like business, I also don't like New York. Then he waves his mala, like, <laughs> he's going to hit me more, you know. Then I said, okay, okay, I will go. Then uh, what kind of business do you want me to start? He said, diamond business. Then I said, I don't know anything about diamonds, like nothing, you know. Why are you asking me to start a diamond business? Why are you asking me to get into the diamond business? Then there's a favorite, very famous sutra by Gautam called uh, Vajrachedaka. It means the diamond cutter. And uh, he said, inside this book is your business plan for your company. You know, inside this old sutra, two and a half thousand years old, there is a plan for your new business. And I want you to read that sutra and you'll know what is your business plan, you know. So I read the sutra, maybe you know about it. It's a little bit crazy, this sutra. For example, in the sutra there's a the disciple of Gautam called uh, Subhuti, and he's talking to Buddha, and they have a conversation with each other, and Buddha says to Subhuti, is a mountain a big thing? And then Subhuti says, Yes, a mountain is a big thing. And then Buddha says, why is a mountain a big thing? And Subhuti says, because it's not a big thing. So it, the sutra is crazy. You cannot understand anything from it. Then he said, this is your business plan. 
for your new company. I'm like, I don't know anything about this. I, I don't understand this book at all. You know, he said, go to New York, take this book, make a million dollars in one year. Try to make a million dollars in one year, you know, using karma. Okay, we taught you for 25 years the principles of karma in, in very detail, in very good detail. And we want you to go to New York. We want you to use the old wisdom from India, Znana. And then you should start a business just using this ancient books, Pustaka. Then I said, okay, I will try. You know, then we started a business. We started with three people. Uh, your friend was one of them. Uh, Uri Cohen, Echod, and uh, we started with three people, uh, a business, small diamond business. We have uh, three or four stones. We sort them all day, three or four stones, you know, and we try to find customers, and then uh, it grew bigger and bigger. Uh, in 2009, it reached uh, $250 million per year, and the company was bought by Warren Buffett. Uh, and then myself, I retired from that business in uh, 1999. And then I wrote this book, which you have. And this is just a gift, okay? You should, if you have time, uh, read the book. It's a very good book. And then people all over the world ask me, how did you do, how did you, you don't have any business training. You just stayed in a monastery 25 years. You know about meditation, you know about yoga. You don't know anything about business. You didn't go to business university. Then how can you start a company that helps to grow 250 million per year? You know? Then I said it's a diamond cutter, sutra. It's the ideas of karma. Okay? And you know shunyata? This is a special idea, uh, emptiness. So today I thought, uh, I was here by the way 25 years ago in Bandra when it was, uh, we were discussing where to put this building, you know, and it was just an empty swamp land, you know, and nobody lived here and everybody thought it was crazy. And uh, nobody believed that it, this building will be here, you know. Uh, maybe some of you remember. So I was here at that time and uh, I thought maybe today uh, you would like to know uh, about this training that I received. Some wisdom from India, ancient India, how to use karma to make your business grow, okay? Like double your business this year, okay? So there's a secret about it and I like to talk about it today. And then you just uh, try it, okay? There are four steps that I will teach you and then you, I will just talk a bit about it. And then maybe you try it in your own business, okay? I say you can double your business this year, okay? I say you can double your business. We started this training company, what, five years ago? Six years ago. And we start with nothing. Uh, then now we are 20,000 people are trained every year. We are in 20 countries, offices in 25 countries. And it just grow like that by using these principles. So I will. I will describe these principles to you, okay? Then you just try it on your own, okay? You can just see if it works for you. I think you can double your business, okay? I know I, I went out last night, I had dinner with some of my old uh, diamond friends, and they said, oh, Michael, it's not like the old days, you know, when you were here and the Indian market was just starting, you know, it was so easy to make money and everybody got rich very fast. And, we also, uh, my friend, they say, oh, it's not like that. Nowadays, it's very tough. Uh, the, the market is tight. Uh, it's very difficult to sell. We used to sell, uh, I think, average uh, 10 point stones. We used to do about 300,000 stones a day. Uh, and now he said, no, no, not like that, Michael. Uh, we are selling 250 stones per carat, <laughs> you know. It's like, uh, looks like sugar, right? And uh, he said it's not easy like the old days, you know, much more difficult now. But I say if you understand these principles, uh, I, will, I will show you something you can use and just try it, okay? You can't lose anything. Uh, we are giving this talk just to help you for free. We came from America, uh, when? Two days ago. And we will spend five days here in India. We will go to Ahmedabad, uh, Varanasi, Bangalore and Delhi. 
and then we have to go to other countries. We, we give this teaching a lot in, in Germany, uh, Russia, South America, and in China. Uh, we spend about three months a year, okay? So I will tell you the secret, okay? And then we talk about how you can use it yourself, okay? So this is the old way of teaching something in ancient India 2,000 years ago. I will ask you a question and you have to give me an answer, okay? We taught uh, British Airways vice presidents uh, these principles and I, I told them, uh, you must give me an answer, you know? So I start to ask them questions and they're like this. You know? And I asked them, what is this thing? And these big British vice president airways, they're like, so don't be like that, okay? Give me a good answer, okay? And don't think about it too much. Just give me, a, just give me an answer, okay? You ready? Okay. Don't be shy. Don't be quiet, okay? Okay, what is this thing? Okay, we can agree it's a pen, okay? Then I'll ask you another question. If a small dog comes down this aisle and I go like this, you know, and I show this thing to the dog, what will they do with it? Yeah, they'll, they'll bite it, especially a small dog, right? Then does the dog see this as a pen or not? No, it doesn't see as a pen. They see it as something to chew. I see it as a pen, okay? Next question. Who's correct, the human or the dog? Yeah, good answer. Both are correct. Why? Dog can chew. They can enjoy. You know? Human can write. Then the stupid human will say, uh, you are chewing on my pen. But the dog will say, you are wasting a good chew toy. <laughs> you know? You should chew on it. Okay? Equal right. You know? The dog is correct. The human is correct. Okay, now is the most important thing today. Most important thing I will say. If I go down here and I put this thing here and then in the evening they close up the boards here and all the people leave, they leave the room. All the dogs also go home to their house. The dogs are gone, the humans are gone. We lock the door. Then at that moment, is this a pen or, or something to chew? Which one? Yeah, you can say neither. That's a good answer, okay? That's a perfect answer. When it's there by itself, or I put it here by itself, and all the dogs go out and all the humans go out, at that moment, this thing is just like nothing, okay? In, in Sanskrit, we call uh, shunyata, shunyata, emptiness, okay? It's just empty. What does it mean, empty? It's like a, can you show a white screen? It's just like a blank screen, okay? At that moment, the pen is like a blank screen, okay? It's not a pen, it's not a chew toy. It's just waiting to be something, okay? Then, then in the morning, they open the door, and we all come inside, and I walk up to this table, and I look at this thing, and in that moment, it becomes what? Again, it becomes a pen. Next question, very important. Is that pen coming from me, or the pen is coming from the pen? Yeah, it's coming from me. Why? When I came in in the morning, and I looked at it, it became a pen. And if the dog had been first in the bars in the morning, it will become a... I can't do it, okay? So if you say, is this thing come from my mind, or this thing comes from itself, we have to say what? Yeah, it comes from my mind, okay? Next question. If it comes from my own mind, then can I close my eyes and I wish this would be a, I don't know, 50 carat D flawless diamond, okay? If it's coming from my mind, okay? If it's only coming from my mind, Maya, illusion, you know? Can I close my eyes and I wish this will become a big, 50 carat D flawless diamond. Will it become or not? Let's try. You can also do mantra, you know, Om Mani Padme Hum, Om Mani Padme Hum. You know, 
Oh, still a pen. Okay. Is it coming from my mind? Yes. Can I change it just by wishing? No, everybody wished to be rich. Everybody wished to be happy. Everybody wished to have a beautiful family. Everybody wished to have a big house. You cannot make by wishing, right? You know that. Everybody wishes to be rich, right? But it doesn't happen. But it's coming from my mind. We already agreed, right? So how does it come from my mind? It's very interesting. Uh, inside your mind, there are seeds, okay? Bija. You can say bija. There are seeds in your mind. You can call them karma also. Everybody's mind has seeds in the mind, okay? And, and when I come here, when I, when I open the door of the bars in the morning, and I come to the table, and I reach this place, and I look at that black thing, some seed opens in my mind, okay? A small seed opens in my mind. You can say karma, vipaka, vipacha. It's opening, okay? And then I, a small picture of a pen comes into my mind, okay? Out of that seed. Out of the seed in my mind comes a small picture of a pen. And my mind puts that picture on the black thing and it becomes a pen, okay? That's how it's coming from me, okay? It's not because I choose. It's not because I wish. It's not because I pray or do some mantra. It becomes a pen because I have a seed in my mind. Does the dog have that seed? No, they don't have. They have a different seed for, for chew toy, okay? When the dog comes here and they, they reach this, this place and they look at the black thing, a seed opens in their mind, this big picture comes out, something to chew, okay? Everybody has their own seeds. Everything around you, the people you see in this room, me, this, the sky, Mumbai city, all of them coming from your seeds. All of them coming from you, okay? The people sitting next to you is coming from you. Your clothes are coming from seeds in your mind. The diamond board is coming from seeds in your mind, okay? So if you want to make uh, $200 million, $300 million, you can do it. Everybody here can do it, okay? If you don't do it, you're making a mistake, okay? You just need to plant the seed, all right? Learn how to plant the seed. You can call karma. I don't like to use the word karma because so much confusion everywhere in the world. I don't like to use this word. If you plant a seed in your mind for $100 million, you can do it. Then just plant the seed. It's easier, okay? It's easier to make money this way. And that's how we did it in my business. I was giving this talk in China. We go to China a lot. Uh, we just, we were in Guang, where were we last time? Guangzhou, Shanghai, and uh, Zhengzhou. So we teach uh, thousands of Chinese people, business people, every, every year. And we were sitting in uh, Guangzhou, and uh, one lady raised her hand, you know? She said, I have a question. Then I said, what's the question? She said, you are giving a business conference. I said, yes, I know. Then she said, you know, I don't need more money. I said, why? She said, I'm, I own a large company. We are very successful. I don't need more money, you know? I don't, I don't need money. Then I said, well, why did you come to this conference? They have to pay like, I don't know, $1,000 every day, you know? Then I said, why did you come to the conference? I have another question for you. I don't need to make money. I need to do something else. What, what do you have to do? I have to fix my husband. What's wrong with your husband? Is he broken? Yes. My husband is broken, you know. What's wrong with your husband? We are married for 30 years. Every night I am cooking. Then one time he didn't wash the, never did he wash the dishes after cooking. I have to cook and I have to wash the dishes. So, is it possible to plant a seed in my mind to force my husband to wash the dishes after I cook? I said, yes, you can do anything, okay? So these seeds are very useful, you know? You can, you can make $200 million and you can also change your wife, fix your wife, fix your husband, okay? Because they're also, husband and wife also coming from 
from your mind, okay? Also, okay? Then one lady got a breast cancer. She, she asked me, is it possible to use this seed to change my cancer? I said, yes. Then uh, she asked me this question in 1995. Uh, she had a breast cancer. You know friend Diane Scott? Yeah. How old is she now? 75, I think. 80. And she cured the, she cured the cancer, okay? Just use the seeds, okay? So this is how things are coming from your mind. It's not by wishing, it's not by pray, it's not by mantra. It's come from a seed in your mind. If you have the seed, you can make money. If you don't have the seed, you won't make money, okay? People ask me all the time, should I invest my money in the stock market or should I invest my money in a real estate? What do you think? I tell them, don't worry about it. Just plant the seed. Just learn how to plant a seed. Then you take this pen and you open the newspaper to the stock exchange and you just drop it. What company it puts the mark? You buy the stock. Okay? If you have a seed, it will make money. If you don't have a seed, it doesn't matter how many financial investor advisors you have, you won't make money, okay? If you have a seed, it, your real estate will make money. If you don't have a seed, same real estate won't make money, okay? So you should ask me one big question now. How to plant a seed? Yeah, oh, God bless, thank you. Yeah, just tell me how to plant a seed, Geshe Michael. I will go try. I will try it myself, okay? So my purpose to come here today, I like to share how to plant a seed. Just, just try it, okay? I will, I will teach you. Then you just try it yourself. You can start with a small experiment, you know? I don't know, I want to find a new customer in the next 30 days, large one. I want to find a large new customer in the next 30 days. Then you decide, okay? I wanted to make a movie out of this book, a Hollywood movie. So I asked my friend, you know, how do you make a Hollywood movie? He said, uh, you send the script, you write a script from the book, and you send it to the Hollywood big producers, you know. Then I said, uh, is it easy? You know, he said, no, they get 1,500 scripts every week. They throw out all of them. They have special garbage cans, you know. Uh, they make one movie every three years or four years out of 50,000 script, they will choose one. You know, then I said, oh, that's too difficult. I will just plant a seed, you see. Then I, I planted a seed. Uh, then Hollywood producer called me. He said, I don't have to call them. Uh, he called me, he said, I want to make a movie out of your book. I said, how do you know about my book? I, my yoga teacher gave it to me. Then I like it, then I tried to find you, I found you, you know. Then I said, uh, did you make a movie before? He said, yes, I'm famous. What movie did you make? Do you know Legally Blonde? It's like a comedy movie, you know, uh, very famous, you know. I said, no, you don't understand. I don't want a director of a comedy. This is a very serious book, you know. He said, yes, but we made $153 million profit. I said, okay, we can do. <laughs> we can work together, you know. So. How to plant a seed like that, okay? How to plant a seed like that? I will tell you four steps, okay? I think it's in the paper that you have. Oh, the third page, okay? Third page. Okay, step number one. Decide what you want, okay? Decide what you want. Then some people say, I want to double my business this year. 2016? I want to double my business, okay? So that's the first step. Step number one, I want to make more money, okay? I want to make more money this year. This is why you are here. This is your business, you know? Of course you want to make more money, and you should. You should make more money. No problem, okay? It's fun, okay? I have what I call oxygen money. You know oxygen money? Then. In this room, there's a lot of oxygen, you know? It's invisible. If you want more, you just have to breathe, okay? You don't have to ask permission from Yaron or, or any, you know, 
you don't have to ask the boss, is it okay if I breathe a little bit extra? <laughs> you know, you just breathe and the oxygen comes to you, right? Money should be like that. Money should be like that. You don't have to think about it. You don't have to worry about it. I don't need much money. I don't want much money. But, but I have as much as I want. It just comes to me. How? I just plant the seed. And then the money comes. I, I have an accountant. He takes care of everything. I don't know how much money I have. Uh, I don't pay the bills. Uh, the other day I needed a thousand dollars. I asked Scott, how do I go to the bank? I never went to the bank to take the money, you know. Then he, he, was, he got it for me. <laughs> oh, last night I wanted to buy a sitar because I play sitar. I learned it first time I came to India 45 years ago. And uh, so I said, I want to buy a sitar. I need a thousand dollars, you know. Then I said, I don't know how to go to the bank. I don't know how to get my money out of my account, you know. Because other people are doing it, you see. So it would be nice. That would be nice. I don't need a, to be very wealthy. I don't need three cars. But I like to have freedom from money. Moksha. From money, you know. I like to not think about it, you know. Let the other people think about it. Then I would like to have oxygen money. Just, you know, just breathe and you have enough money. Okay? That's what we're talking about. So number one, Scott, I'm sorry to bother you. Do you have a hundred dollars? Come on. Oh, I owe you from the other day, sorry. This is how I make extra money during the talk. Okay, so we are going to plant uh, $1,000, okay? I'll show you how to plant uh, $1,000, all right? And we'll do it together. So first thing of the four steps, first step, you decide what you want, okay? You can say, I want to make $1,000. If you want, you can say, I want to fix my wife. Or you can say, I want, to fi I want to lose 10 pounds. You know, what's that? How many kilos? I don't know. But I want to lose some weight. So first thing, I want to make $1,000 in the next two weeks or three weeks. Okay? That's all. That's step number one. Step number two, you must find another person who wants to make money. Okay? You cannot plant karma seed by yourself. Not possible. Cannot happen. Not possible for anybody. Nobody can do. You must use another person. Okay? You cannot plant a flower in the sky. Right? It's not possible. You need to use another person. Okay? So in this business, karma business, other people are very valuable. Okay? I cannot plant a seed without you. Okay? I need another person. Okay? Otherwise I cannot plant my seed. Okay? So, I will choose this. What's your name, please? Just relax, yeah. You don't have to do anything. Huh? Gagan. Say again. Gagan, G-A-G-A-N. Gagan, yeah. yeah. So, I asked Gagan, you know, step number two. Do you want some money? Do you want to make some money? Sure. Yeah, he says, okay, uh, no problem, okay? Uh, that's a step number two. Step number one, I want to make $1,000 in the next two weeks, okay? Step number two. I must find the other person who wants to make some money. Gagan, do you want to make some money? Sure. And he says, yeah, I, I want to make some money. Step number three, help him to make some money. Okay? That plants a seed. Okay? You, so we're going to plant, I'm going to plant a thousand dollar seed. Okay? Ready? You have to give, you just hold up your hand. Okay? Then, I want to make a thousand dollars. I want to plant a seed. Okay? How do I plant a seed? Okay? Like that. Now, when I let go, when I open my hand, who sees my hand opening? Gagan. Gagan sees. Anybody else? We are alone in the Starbucks. I'm, yeah, good. I myself, I see, okay? I see my hand open, okay? That image comes through the window of my eye, comes through and it touches my mind. It touches my mind. It like brushes against my mind. Now, if I have love for him, if I care about his success, if I want to make Gagan successful, when, the, when that image comes to, touches my mind, it makes an impression like that. It makes an impression on my mind. Within three or four hours, that impression becomes a seed, karmic seed. Okay? It's very cool. 
It's very logical, okay? It's not like some kind of uh, superstition. It's very uh, correct, easy, yeah, uh, logical. Yeah, I just let go. I see my hand open. That picture comes into my eye. It touches my mind, and it makes an impression. And that impression becomes a seed, okay? That power of that seed will double every 24 hours. If it's planted with love, if I care about him, if I say, Gagan, I hope you're successful. I hope you take the hundred dollars and take your wife to dinner, okay? <laughs> like that. <laughs> okay? Like that. Just, okay? So I must have some kind of, uh, I want to make him happy, okay? I must want to make you happy, okay? Then if I give it to you with that, and I see my hand open, or I hear myself say something good to you like, I hope you make double business this year, okay? If, if I hear myself, those words come to my mind, they make an impression. And that impression becomes a seed, okay? So that's, that's all, okay? That's how you plant a seed for a thousand dollars. Within two or three weeks, I will make a thousand dollars, okay? Is he happy? Yes. <laughs> yeah, he's happy. He just got a hundred dollars free, okay? He didn't expect to make a hundred dollars this afternoon, you know? He just got a hundred dollars free. Am I happy? Yeah, yes. yeah why? Like I'm going to make a thousand. <laughs> I will make a thousand, okay? He's my uh, associate now. Now we are colleagues, okay? I need him. I cannot plant a seed without him, okay? So you must find somebody else in your business or your friend, somebody who wants money, okay? If you want to plant a seed for money, you must find another person who wants to make money. You cannot use this system without another person. Not possible, okay? So in your life, you have a choice. Two ways to make money. Number one, fight all day. Compete all day. Push the other diamond dealers all day. Push, push, fight for the customer. It's stressful. You don't know how many diamond dealers I saw die in my life, okay? Maybe a hundred, okay? In my, I'm a long life, okay? I had a long life. I saw many die. Ulcer, stroke, okay? Big guys, very big guys, you know? And you can use that. That's the first way to make money. Fight with the other people, okay? Second way to make money, <laughs> relax, plant a seed. Just plant the seed. It doesn't mean, by the way, you don't have to work after that, okay? <laughs> you cannot stay home. <laughs> I mean, actually, if you do it very well, you can stay home, the money will come. But normal people like us, uh, it doesn't, I'm not saying you don't have to work, okay? But after that, when you work, you will make money easily, okay? And then if you don't plant the seed, if you do the same work, it will be difficult, okay? Plant the seed and relax. Still come to the office, still call your customers, still make business. You will make more money, okay? When other people aren't... We started in the recession. We started our company during the recession. Uh, the business was dead. And, and we just grew double every year, okay? And this is, this is how you can do it, okay? Now, we got three steps so far. Number one is what? Come on. Don't be British Airways. Give me an answer. Yeah, decide what you want. I want to fix my wife. <laughs> or husband. Or, you know, I want to be healthy. I want to lose 10 kilos or something like that, okay? Decide what you want. Number two? Yeah, good. Find the other person who wants the same thing, okay? Not difficult. Everybody in this building wants to make money, okay? Not difficult to find. Third one? Help them. Help them to make some money, okay? It's not necessary to give them money, okay? I say one hour every week help the other diamond dealer to make some business, okay? One hour every week help them to make some business. Another guy, okay? Then at this time, at this point, everybody say, you're crazy. Michael, you're crazy. Why? You want me to help my competition? You know, I'm supposed to fight with them. That's like Pepsi-Cola, Coca-Cola supposed to work together. Like KFC and McDonald's supposed to work together. No. 
They're supposed to compete with each other. That's an old system, stupid system. It just caused stroke and ulcer and also war. <laughs> okay. Just help the competition, help your competition. Okay. It's a very strange system. He will make $100, you will make $1,000. Okay. It's not stupid. It's not crazy. It's a new system from India, two and a half thousand years old. Okay. <laughs> it all started here. Now we finish three steps, okay? Now I'll give you the bad news, okay? Some bad news. Uh, that seed can stay in your mind for a thousand years without opening, okay? You give uh, Gagan a uh, hundred dollars and that seed can stay in your mind for one thousand years without opening, okay? Because nothing can destroy karma seed, nothing. Nothing can destroy it, okay? It will stay there until it opens, okay? But sometimes it takes a thousand years, okay? Is it possible that the, the seed will stay in your mind for a thousand years? He say no because we cannot live for more than... Oh, can you live 70, 80, 90 years? We don't know, okay? But thousand years? No. Cannot live. What happens to the seed if I die? What do you think? If I die, where do those seeds go? If I die before the thousand dollar comes, where does the seed go? Nothing can destroy it. It stays in the universe and it will open and it will become you. And you will become you again. You see? It's very interesting. That's why rebirth. That's why we have to be born again. Nothing can destroy those seeds. Your body is, uh, those seeds are stronger than your body. Your body will die before some of those seeds open, okay? Then I, I asked uh, my teacher, my guru, you know, I, I said, I, you asked me to make a million dollars in one year. He said, yes. Then uh, if I help Gagan, if I give him some money and I help him, how long will it take to open that seed? How many days will it take to open? This is an important question, right? Then he said, in Tibetan language we call Sechima, uh, Parajiva. It means next life. You know, then I, I said, no, 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 you don't understand. I'm American. We like fast food. Uh, we like McDonald's french fry in, in four minutes. If you don't cook the french fry in McDonald's in four minutes, they will fire you. You see, we are from America. I don't want to wait till next life. Even we don't, we're not sure there is a next life, okay? I want, I want to know, okay, one month or two weeks, okay, something like that. Is there a way to make the seed open fast? Step number four, okay? Step number four. What does it say on the paper? I don't know. Oh, okay, coffee meditation, okay? So for this, you need to understand in, in our monastery, we have a branch in America. Then I went to study with one guru there, you know, and uh, we are not allowed to watch television. The, the small guys, we are not allowed to watch television, but the number one guy, he can watch television, the boss, you know. So, you know, when I come back from my diamond business in New York every day, I have to come back to this small monastery, and uh, I can hear he's watching television upstairs. Then I want to go watch some football or something, you know, but I'm not supposed to watch. So I think, how can I go watch the television. Then he likes tea, you know. They love tea. Tibetans love. You put the tea and milk and salt. It tastes terrible, okay. Not sugar. You put salt. Then I, I said, I will make a tea for my guru and then I will take it up to the guru and I will watch television, you know. So I make a nice tea for him and then I take it up to, the, to my guru and, and you knock on the door. Then uh, in Tibet, uh, they will say, show, show, show. Show is the language you use for dog. It means come, you know. It, it means I'm like a dog, you know. Then you say, show. Then you open the door, then you have to get on your knees and you have to give the tea and you cannot look at the guru. You have to look at the ground and you, you go like this, you offer the tea. Then he's always watching television and he will, he will drink the tea. Then I will go like this, you know, behind his chair and I will hide, and I will watch the TV, you know. I will watch the football game, you know, quietly. 
and then he's doing mantra, he's watching the football game. Then you know those big gurus, they have three eyes, right? <laughs> Third one is here. My guru has a fourth one in the back. <laughs> you know? Then he say, he say, what are you doing here? Why are you staying here? I said, oh, oh Guruji, I just want to watch the football. I'm so tired. I work in the diamond business all day. I come home. I just want to watch some television. You know, please let me stay. Then he said, did you meditate today? Then I said, how can I meditate? I go, it's two hours in my house. It's two hours from Manhattan. Two hours to drive in, two hours to come back. You know, maybe some of you, it's like that, right? So I said, how can I meditate? I have to get up like 6 o'clock, go to the office. I come back at 7, 8, 9 o'clock. How can I meditate? You know, I didn't meditate today. Then he said, if you want to stay here and watch the football game, you must meditate. Now. Then I said, okay. Then I go to, you have a chair, Scott? Mm. How about that one? How about that one? No, too heavy. The little one is better. Uh, easier actually, the little one. You want that one? Yeah, I need it. Okay. Then he say, uh, he said, okay, you, you meditate now, then you can watch the football, you know. So he, he said, sit on the chair. Then we will go like this, supposed to, you know, meditate like that. He said, you sit like, usually he taught me, you should meditate like that, you know. I get like this. He says, don't do that. I said, you taught me to do this. He said, no, no, don't do that. Put your legs out like this. Then put the right leg over the left leg. Then you need mudra. You know mudra? Argam, padyam, pushpe, dupe, alake, gande, naividya. There are special mudras, right? He said, you need special mudra. I said, what is the mudra? He said, go like this with your hand. Then I said, I never saw this one. He said, it's a new one. I said, what do you do? He said, put it under your head. Like that. <laughs> Relax. Sit back. Meditate. I said, you can't meditate like this. This is not meditation. We call coffee meditation. What is coffee meditation? Step four, okay? If you want the seed to grow fast, if you don't want to wait 1,000 years for $1,000, okay, then you must do step number four, okay? You do it before you go to sleep, okay? Just before you go to sleep, you lay down on your bed, right? And you, you just relax like that, okay? And you think about the good thing you did for Gagan, okay? Just think about it, all right? You think about the seed which you planted in your mind to help Gagan, okay? Then that will make the seed open fast. Be happy about the good karma you did, okay? Be happy about the good karma you did. If you know yoga philosophy, Patanjali, yoga sutra, then you know about prana, okay? Then they say prana follows the chitta, okay? So when you, when you think about the good thing you did for Gagan, it carries the prana to the seed inside your mind and it gets hot. The seed gets hotter inside your mind. If you focus on your finger for, for five minutes, the temperature will go up. You can put a thermometer and you can check it because the prana and the vayu, they go to the end of your finger. If you focus on the good seed you planted with gagan, that seed will open much faster, okay? If you are happy about the good karma you are doing, that seed will open very fast, okay? And then the thousand dollars will come. How? It doesn't matter, don't worry about it. It will come, okay? The, when the karma seeds open, the thousand dollars will, will change the world to come to you. You don't have to change yourself. The world will change to deliver. The world is the postman, and it will deliver to you the letter which you wrote to yourself when you gave Gagan a hundred dollars, okay? Understand? It's very cool, okay? So usually you think, oh, meditation is boring, or meditation is difficult, or you know, like that. But it's not like that. You just relax before you go to bed. Just before you sleep, your mind is very open. Just as you fall asleep, your mind is very open. For six hours, seven hours, eight hours, your mind is open. 
while you are sleeping, okay? So while you go to sleep, think some happy thought. Oh, today I gave Gagan $100. I'm imagining he's taking his wife out to a nice dinner. You know, I just imagine it. Then I get happy. In my mind, I feel happy, okay? That happiness makes the seed grow faster. That happiness forces the seed to open. In, in a month or two months, like that, it's, it's cool. It's very cool. So if you know the four steps, you can plan your business, okay? You don't have to fight for business. Okay? Fighting is old system. Fighting is like, I don't know, how many people came here in a horse? How many people came to the diamond boards this morning riding on a horse? <laughs> and they say nobody. Why not? We have car. Michael, we have car, you know. We don't need to ride a horse. Well, why don't you ride a horse? Horse is dirty. Horse takes a lot of food. It's difficult to keep a horse. Horse smells bad. You know, we like a car, you know. We like a car. So 100 years ago, everybody came to business on their horse, okay? Now they use a car, okay? Right now, everybody's doing business with competition, okay? Fighting for money, fighting for customers. And it makes everybody tired. And, it, and it, it, you lose all your energy, okay? This, this is the automobile, that's the horse, okay? That old system is like a horse, okay? Give it up, okay? Just try. Okay, just try it. Then just try the four steps, okay? See if it works. Number one, let's, let's do it for your wife, okay? Forget the money, okay? If you have a lot of money and your wife is a lot of trouble, it doesn't help, okay? It'd be nice to have money and a wife who's not a lot of trouble, okay? Uh, so money without a good wife is trouble. A nice wife without money is also trouble. We should have both, okay? So let's use the four steps, okay? So I don't know, my wife, she's, she, doesn't, she spends money, she doesn't ask me, okay? Let's say I have a problem like that. You know, I want my wife to, to be more responsible with. I don't want her to spend money while I'm working. She spend more money than we have. I don't want that, okay? So that's a step number one, okay? What's step number two? Hmm? Find another person who is having trouble with their Bye. wife. Okay, got it? This is system. System. Same four steps. Second step, find someone who's having trouble with their wife. It's not difficult to find. <laughs> <laughs> okay, step number two. Step number three, do what? Help them. Yeah, help them. One hour every week. Okay, one hour every week. Don't invite them to your house and don't go to their house. It's uncomfortable for them. When you come to their house, it's uncomfortable. When they come to your house, it's uncomfortable for them also. So meet them at a neutral space, like go to the Starbucks coffee shop. It will help the American economy also. <laughs> okay, meet them, meet them at a tea shop, meet them at a coffee shop. Okay, I will meet you, meet me on Friday. I always tell people Friday. I don't know about the diamond business in Mumbai. I didn't do diamonds here for 15 years, okay? but. In, in our office in New York, on Friday, after 2 o'clock, nobody does anything. The workers don't work, the boss doesn't do any business, just waiting till 5 o'clock, you know. Three hours waste. So I suggest every Friday, I don't know, 4 o'clock, make a plan with the other guy who's having trouble with his wife and help him for one hour, okay? Every week, one hour. You, you cannot fix your wife without helping somebody else. In this system, you must help another person. You cannot plant a seed by yourself. Karma is like an echo. You, you make a sound and it comes back. You need to another person. You must have another person. You cannot do it without another person. So find a guy. Step one, I want to fix my wife. She spends too much money. Number two, find the other guy who has a problem. Then there's a famous question, it's called uh, chocolate ice cream question, okay? I will tell you, what is chocolate ice cream question? <laughs> Somebody asked me in, in uh, Germany, you know, uh, if I want, if my number one is I want to have chocolate ice cream, but I can only find a person who wants vanilla ice cream, is it okay? Then yes, okay? Just has to be similar, okay? 
So your friend doesn't have to have trouble with a wife who spend too much money. Okay? Maybe they have a trouble with a wife who's texting too many guys. Okay? It's okay. It's okay. Any trouble with a wife is okay. Okay? So number one, I, I, want, I don't want to have trouble with my wife, spend too much money. Number two, find any guy who's having trouble with his wife. Number three, take him to the coffee shop. That's why we call the four coffee shop steps. Okay? Take him to a neutral space and help him one hour every week, say Friday afternoon, okay? Then what's step number four? Show me the mudra. Yeah, yeah, very good, very good, okay? This is mudra, right? When, just before you go to bed, okay? The mind is very open while you're sleeping. That's why it's not good to worry about money before you sleep, okay? Just before you sleep, never think bad thoughts, okay? This guy owe me money, this customer from, you know, France not going to pay me, I think. You know, don't worry about it. Don't think like that, okay? You can worry all day long, it's okay. But when it's time to go to bed, you should have some good thought in your mind, okay? Because that thought will stay for six, seven, eight hours, okay? So when you sleep, make sure not to have worry thoughts, okay? Don't think about customers, don't think about money, don't think about investors, okay? Don't think about employees. Just think some, some good thing you did, okay? And then that will make the seed grow faster, okay? That will make the seed grow faster. Anybody have any questions so far? No? No? Okay. Then we're going to... Go ahead. Uh, like you said, before sleeping, think of something good you did. Does it have to be in regards to what you just did for another person, or can be any, any good thing you did for them? Uh, I'm going to ask you to repeat it with a microphone. Here we go. And just relax and go ahead. Like you said, you should uh, continue to take meal before sleeping. Uh, does it have for any good person that you will take? Or can it be any good thing you done for the day of meeting? Yeah, good question. Good question. Then you have to know there are four laws of karma. There are four laws of karma. Okay? Number one, first law of karma is that what you do comes back similar. Okay? So what you do will come back similar. So if you want to fix your wife, it doesn't help to find a guy who wants money. You must find a guy who is having trouble with his wife. Okay? Uh, if you want to fix your wife and the money at the same time, you need two guys. Okay? <laughs> I gave this talk in uh, Detroit to a uh, Chevrolet company, General Motors, and uh, we have two days uh, conference, you know. And the second day, some guy came, he said, I'm so happy, Michael, I, I'm so happy. I said, why? He said, I found her. I said, who did you find? I found a lady. She's lonely, she's sick, and she's poor. I can make money, I can make a girlfriend, and I can make a healthy body with one lady, okay? So it's good if you can find someone who has a lot of different problems, okay? When you help them, you make three kinds of seeds, four kinds of seeds, okay? But it's a good question. First law of karma, what you do, the same thing will come back, okay? Not a different thing. You cannot plant rice and get corn. Not possible, okay? You cannot plant a watermelon and get a mango, okay? It's not possible, okay? So what you want, you must do something almost the same, okay? Then there's a, you want to know the other four? <laughs> I'll, I'll give you the all four laws of karma. Number two is uh, karma always grows, okay? When, like those trees outside, those trees you can see outside, the seed is, is half a gram. The seed weighs half a gram, okay? And uh, that tree is, I think, five tons four or five tons, okay? So every day, the seed which you plant in your mind doubles, okay? If you, if, you, if you understand how to do this step number four, coffee meditation, that seed will double every 24 hours, okay? Then I had a guy in, uh, I forget, we were in Beijing, and he raised his hand, you know? He said, I don't agree, you know? It's not possible. Uh, you know, I will make a thousand dollars from give a one hundred dollars. The seed will grow ten times. It's not possible. I don't believe it. He raised his hand, you know. Then I took his hand. I said, do you know how many cells are in this hand? 
in your arm? He said, I don't know. I said, one trillion. One trillion cells are in the hand which you raised to tell me I'm wrong. Okay? Then I said, how did you get this arm? Where did those cells come from? Your father gave one. Your mother gave one. Really, really, okay? Your, your mother gave one cell. It's an egg. Your father gave one cell. It's a sperm. Your arm, which you tell me I'm wrong, it has one trillion cells. It came from the two, okay? It's always like that. Seeds always grow much faster. Double every 24 hours, okay? Double every 24 hours. The third law of karma, if you don't do it, you won't get anything. Okay? If you don't do it, you won't get anything. <clears throat> then I had a, I was teaching in Ukraine, and one guy in the audience, uh, he, he raised his hand, he said, I don't believe you. I said, why? He says, you can see many people in our country, they are getting, the government people are getting very wealthy, you know. They are not doing anything, they are hurting people, okay. They are hurting people and they are making lots of money. So your system sounds very spiritual, your system sounds very nice, but it's not true. You know, we can see many people. He said, I myself am a mafia. <laughs> you know, he took me to uh, dinner, you know. I didn't know what's his business. He said, I want, I want you to help me with my business, you know. Then I, he took me to a restaurant. Everybody in the restaurant is like this, and there's a big bump here. <laughs> they have a big bump here. And all the women have uh, this mini skirt, you know. Then I'm like, what kind of restaurant is this? He said, this is mafia restaurant, you know. We are mafia. Then I, <laughs> I said, hey, what do you want from me, you know. I was a little bit scared. You know, he says, uh, I need your help. I said, what? He says, I want to double my business, you know. I want to double my mafia business, you know. <laughs> then I said, uh, okay, uh, I'll teach you the four steps, you know. How many companies do you have? He says, I have ten companies, you know. I said, okay, I'll make you an agreement. You let me one, run one of the companies. You run nine, I will run one, okay. But the company which I run, I will run honest. I will run honest way. Okay, I will pay the taxes, I won't give uh, bribes. I will run the one company with karma. And you run the nine companies your way, old way, with the gun, you know, and the bribe, you know. Then we will make a competition for one year. And uh, then I, we started, you know. Then after about one year later, I was in Germany. I was teaching in Germany, and uh, there's a knock on my door, hotel. And I opened the door and it's the mafia guy, you know. Then he's like, I gotta talk to you. You know, I'm like, okay, okay, okay man, just relax, you know. Then I got very scared, you know, I thought he's gonna do something, you know. He's, I gotta talk to you about my business, you know. I said, okay, sit down, calm down, don't worry, don't worry. He says, you are right. The company which, which you are following Karma, it's make double profit last year than the other companies, okay. He said, thank you so much, and he hugged me. I can feel this bump, you know. <laughs> and <laughs> he gave me a hug. He said, thank you so much. Then I told all of my friends, now I'm also the guru for the mafia. <laughs> you know, and uh, so we can see that some people make money, but they didn't do these four steps, you know. They didn't, uh, they're not nice guys. They're like hurting people, okay. Then how is that possible? What do you think? Is it possible for a mango to make a banana? It's not possible, okay? If a guy has a banana, he must have planted a banana. If a guy has a mango, he must have planted a mango. If a mafia guy is making money, it's not because he paid a bribe, it's because he did something nice for his mother last year. Okay, understand? It's always like that, okay? But we have avidya, right? Avidya. We don't understand. We think, oh, he paid a bribe and he made money. It's not true, okay? A, a negative action, a negative karma, cannot make a positive action. Not possible. It's impossible, okay? Banana cannot make a mango, okay? If you plant something sweet, you will get something sweet, okay? It's always like that. But we cannot see, okay? We cannot see. We just say, oh, the guy is making money. And he paid a bribe last year. Then I was in Russia recently, and, and they asked me this question. This guy is, 
paying a bribe to the government, he's making lots of money. Why is that possible? Then I'm going like this, you know. Then the Russian guys, finally they got angry. Stop doing that. What? Stop banging on the microphone. I said, no, I'm sorry, I have to do it. You know, he said, why do you have to do it? I said, I have to make the sun come up tomorrow. I'm making the sun to come up tomorrow. He said, what? I said, I do this and I have to do it. If I don't do it, the sun won't come up tomorrow. He said, that's crazy. There's no connection. This is just making noise and the sun comes up tomorrow. There's no connection. What are you talking about? I said, no, you don't understand. I'm doing this every day and every day the sun is coming up. <laughs> understand? <laughs> okay. You can pay a bribe. It doesn't make the money come. It's not what made the... It's no connection. Okay? There's no connection. Okay? You cannot plant a negative karma and you get some money. It's not possible. Okay? It looks like that. Oh, sun come up tomorrow. Geshe Michael, good job. Good job. Thank you for banging on the microphone. Okay? Fourth law of karma. If you plant a seed, you will always get something. You cannot avoid it. You know? Krishna met Arjuna where? Huh? Where did Krishna meet Arjuna? In the Gita, in the Bhagavad Gita, right? And uh, they have a discussion in the Bhagavad Gita and, and, and Krishna says to Arjuna, don't be attached to the fruits of your karma, okay? Don't be attached to the fruit of your karma. So everybody read this and they say, oh, I shouldn't want money, you know? If I give Gagan a hundred dollars, I should say, I don't care if I make a thousand dollars or not. It's, but it's not what he meant, okay? It's not what he meant. It means don't work very hard, fight with the other business people, and think you're going to get some result, okay? It doesn't work like that. That's attachment to the fruit, okay? If you plant a good seed, if you use these four steps, you will make money, and you can't stop it. Even God want, doesn't want you to make money, thousand dollars into, I will make it. Nobody can stop it. I can't, I myself cannot stop it, okay? It will come, okay? If you plant the seed, it will come. Okay, we have about 10 minutes. I want to ask, I'm going to ask myself a question, okay? This is a question that someone asked me in China, and then we will stop, okay? Uh, someone in China asked me this question. They say, Geshe uh, Maigo, I don't know what's the custom in America, I don't know. But in China, our, our parents teach us, when you give Gagan a hundred dollars, right? When you give something to another person, you shouldn't say to Gagan, don't forget, I gave you some money. Tomorrow, you know, maybe you can give me some money, you know, like that. The true dana, dana paramita, the, the true giving should be without without expectation. You, you don't give something to somebody and say, give me, give me a thousand dollars next week, don't forget, okay? Don't forget me. You know, this is not giving. This is like a business, karma business. You know, this is not uh, love. This is not uh, maitri. This is not, this is just a business, karma business. You are giving him hundred dollars because you want a thousand dollars. This is just a business, you know? Then, when you give something to somebody, you shouldn't expect anything back, okay? And that's true, okay? So is it possible that when I give you money and money comes back to me, I'm doing something very good for the world? What do you think? If I have a different thinking about it, okay? If I give you a hundred dollars and next week I get a thousand dollars back, and I become very successful, what will those other guys think? They will ask me, how did you do that? Okay? You stayed in a meditation place for 25 years, Mandar, right? You stayed in, the, in this place for 25 years, Geshla. You didn't do any business training. Suddenly your company is quarter billion dollars, okay? How did you do that? They will ask you, your friends will ask you, Gagan, why suddenly your business is double from last year? What are you doing? Then he's going to say, four steps. 
he will teach people four steps, okay? Got it? So is that selfish? You see? Is it selfish for me to give you a hundred dollars? Is it selfish? I give him a hundred dollars, I make a thousand dollars. Is it selfish or not? No. Why? Other people will watch you. Other people will say, hmm, Keshi Michael made thousand dollars because he gave a hundred dollars. Then what will happen? People copy successful people, always. They, they say, how did you do that? How did you make a thousand dollars? I say, I gave a hundred with the four steps. Then what will happen? They will try it. Then their friend's friend will say, how did, how did you make money? I, can, I use karma, I use the four steps, you know? Then it will spread like a virus, okay? So, it's not selfish, okay? It's not selfish to use the seeds, okay? It's, it's compassion. It's love. It creates a perfect world, okay? If I, if I start a new system in the Mumbai Dharma Boards today with Gagan, if we start a new system, right? And suddenly, all the guys are helping each other to make money. And all of them are more rich than last year. If, if, if somebody in this room make double business this year because you are using four steps, the other people will copy you. And they will start helping other people. Then what will happen? Everybody become rich, okay? Everybody become rich, okay? Is it selfish? No, it's love. It's, it's a kind of love, okay? Everybody will become rich, okay? Is it possible? Yeah, because money coming from here. It's not there's a pizza with eight pieces and, and we have to split it, okay? It's not like that. Money is not like a pizza, okay? Money is coming from here. You can have you can make much more money. Everyone can have more money. Okay, understand? Then it's a beautiful world. Then you make a beautiful world. They call mandala, right? Perfect world. Any question? Because we, we'll stop there. Uh, also, I have some other books, okay? Everybody, please keep this book. Read it. You're welcome to have it. And uh, we have some other books. Uh, this one called uh, Karma of Love. Uh, it's how to fix your wire. Okay, there's 100 questions in here, family problem, okay? And uh, you are welcome to take one for free, okay? Why am I giving away a book for free? I'm planting seed, okay? I'm not stupid, okay? <laughs> okay, I'm giving to you. So if you have some family problems, like problem with your wife, problem with your parents, problem with your kids, just ask uh, Orit, can you give people? Orit will give to you, okay? Uh, if you have health problems, uh, there's this book, it's called How Yoga Works, okay? This is, uh, eh. this is the Yoga Sutra of Patanjali, but it's uh, modern, modern teaching of Yoga Sutra. It's how to fix your health, okay? I'm 63. I started ballet when I was 50. Okay, I couldn't do this when I was 25, okay? Uh, you can change your health, okay? If you want to change your health, if you want to be healthy, uh, take one of these, okay? I hope you have enough. <laughs> yeah, take one of these, yeah, okay? Don't take one if you're not going to use it, okay? But if you really want to improve your health, you want to be strong, uh, healthy, take one of these, okay? Good. All right, also if you, uh, if you have time, tonight at St. Andrew's College Auditorium, 7 o'clock, 7.30. 7.30? I will give the same talk for public, okay? So if you want to bring a friend or your wife, if you, you can fix her at the talk. Uh, you're welcome to come. There's no charge, no charge for the talk, okay? If you have time. Uh, 7.30 at St. Andrew. And we will give talks in Ahmedabad, Delhi, and Varanasi in the next four or five days. Huh? And Bangalore, yeah. Uh, if you want that information, talk to or read or Scott. Can you, can you stand up? They are the two vice presidents of our company. Uh, they are teaching all over the world. Last year they taught in 35 cities, 25 countries. They're very good. Or Reed is a uh, professor, she has a degree in medicine, 
She also has a degree in education. Uh, she's a yoga teacher. She's a very good meditation teacher. Uh, she teaches business people all over the world. Uh, Scott, her husband, is uh, worked in the advertising business for 25 years in America for Mercedes-Benz and Volkswagen and companies like that. Uh, so after we, we finish, if you have some private question, personal question, you don't want to talk about your wife in front of all the other diamond dealers, uh, you can talk to them. We will stay here for maybe a few more minutes. And uh, if you have any personal question, like you have some medical problem or, or you have some problem with your wife or you have some special business problem, uh, we will stay here and you're welcome to, to come. Okay. Uh, if you're interested in knowing more uh, next time we come to India and next time we come to Mumbai, then uh, please leave your business card or do you have a, a paper or a book or anything they can, they can write their email? Yeah? You have one? Okay, let's talk to Scott. If you want to know next time we are coming ahead of time, uh, just give him your email and we will, we will send you an email. And, uh, if you want to talk in your own company or some other organization that you have, we're, we're, we love to share. We like to plant seeds, okay? So just talk to him and we'd be happy to come, okay? All right, thank you very much and thank you for coming. Okay. Understand how to plant a seed. Если вы поймете, как сажать семя, you can plant money. вы можете посадить семя для денег. You can plant a beautiful вы можете посадить семя для замечательных отношений. You can plant a healthy body. So what will happen if you use this new system? Итак, что произойдет, если вы будете использовать эту новую систему? Every time you want something in your life, каждый раз, когда вы хотите чего-то в своей жизни, you just plant it. 